Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish and welcome back to episode 6 or 7 of our Setra campaign for Rise of the Tomb King. So we last left off, we were getting ready to take the first book of Nagash and winning this battle will hopefully achieve us that. So what we'll do is we'll jump into it uh, straight away, beginning of the episode. The enemy do have a decent amount of archers and they also have a decent amount of cavalry, so it's not going to be an easy battle by any means. However, I'm sure that we can, you know, hold firm and win this battle uh, you know, we do have such a pretty elite army of uh, some Nekarara warriors, as well as the Tomb Guard. You know, he is killing it at the moment with his force. So we'll jump into the engagement and get ready for the battle. So this is actually a choke point battle, which was something I didn't expect it to be. I mean, I guess it makes sense. We are in the mountains, so it is only right that we do have a choke point battle. This is going to be interesting. I'm not sure if it's going to work in my favor or the favor of the orcs. I mean, first things first, obviously, we just have to charge forward and engage on them. We do obviously have our newly recruited tomb guard as well. These guys have been risen from the dead, and I'm expecting them to do great, great things for the empire. We also have some halberd versions as well. Again, hopefully they'll do some great damage. I think as well, we're just going to charge forward. Instead of waiting for our reinforcements, we're just going to push on them and try and take out as much as we can. Because I think my infantry will cut through theirs, uh, which is kind of weird to say as, as a Tomb Kings, you know, expecting your infantry to do well against theirs. But I, I honestly think it will, because they don't really have a lot of quality in their ranks. Um, I probably should put all my Tomb Guard actually on this right flank. Uh, along with the Halberdiers. Then I'll stick all of these anti-infantry dudes on the left. Have my archers kind of on the second rank. I have a lot of cavalry on this army, which I guess isn't going to provide me with a lot of damage. We'll also stick these guys there. The Necro... Uh, oh, sorry. We'll stick both the War Sphinxes over here. And then the Skeleton Spears, I guess, can go over here as well. With our heroes, I guess we'll leave our Necro Tech here. And we'll send our Tomb Prince over on the left-hand side. This is a good little setup for now. So let's immediately throw up these formations. And I think the quicker we go ahead and get, like, our heavy infantry and all our constructs into battle the better. I mean, Cetra himself is now on a War Sphinx, so he's going to be doing so much damage to the enemies. To see Cetra upon that, we obviously have the other War Sphinx as well. I guess we'll tell these guys to hold up, though. No need to, no need to rush to battle. Same with the chariots as well. We obviously have all of these reinforcements turning up as well, so everyone literally just make your way up. So we are getting hit by artillery. That is kind of what these buzzards are for. So we're going to send these guys over a little bit. Where is our artillery coming from? Out of interest. I can barely see it. Where is it? Oh, right here. I guess we'll just send the buzzards straight away in. We obviously want all of these archers up here as soon as we can as well. The archer support is going to be immersed, like a massive. All the infantry as well can make their way up here. We honestly just want to try and engage the enemy as quickly as physically possible. And I think we're just going to throw in Setra, honestly, um, and just try and get some damage done uh, on these ranks. The buzzards are going in as well. We'll send all of this infantry in. Just simply engage them. Because once you engage them, it's going to be over for a lot of their spearmen. Who are just basically nothing. We'll send in the Ashabi as well as the Tomb Prince. And obviously all of these archers can now start opening up on their archers. Probably focus down their missiles first. The Tomb Guard can go in as well. We'll send in all that Tomb Guard. Cetra and the boys have now popped themselves in. Perfect. We'll split them up a little bit so Cetra goes there. Don't want Cetra to go too far out of the ranks. Good damage off there straight away. We do have a lot of debuffs. I'm going to wait for the enemy to clump up a little bit. We have the Ashabi, uh, the Ashabi going in as well. Killing these goblins just do not stand a chance. One bit, wow. The Necro Tech, where you at, my boy? Necro Tech, get your ass up here as well. Okay, cool. They're piling in pretty heavily. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop an extended duration uh, version of this debuff. Actually, we don't need to. The extended version reduces melee attack by like 50, uh, but we don't need to. These are just normal goblins. So we're going to debuff all of these guys. Should be a huge buff. And then we have the rest of our units making their way in as well. All the elite guys pouring in. None of these guys should have good uh, melee attack whatsoever. The archers are pouring in. The buzzards are still causing a nuisance to their ranks. I think archers actually focus down these guys if you can. We'll send the necro tech up as well. Rest of our anti-infantry piling in as well, which is perfect. And then we have all of these guys making their way up as well. Uh, obviously, should bring up this general um, also to help out. And probably should just pile in more and more of our soldiers. Yeah, here's a nice little fireball as well we definitely want to use. The debuff is just so good. Look, it's still going off right now. These guys have two melee attack. It's just such a strong ability, it really is. Oh, archers, what the hell are you doing, boys? Come on. Sort your, sort your stuff out, please. Uh, we are going to pop the restore off onto our, our War Sphinx though, which is currently in the midst of fight battle. Probably pull yourself out now a little bit. Yeah, I can't believe that. It's so annoying. Cedra needs to actually fall back a little bit now as well. 
So frustrating. The rest of the infantry, though, can definitely pile up. We haven't even hit our first, uh, first realm of souls yet either, which is pretty decent. Archers, just push yourselves up, please. Chariots, just hold back for now. Anything else I'm missing? Just the chariots, which we can't really use. Archers, come on now. Shoot some like important targets, please. Hit their missiles right there. Searcher needs to make sure he's constantly popping off these debuffs whenever he can. Because whenever we pop a spell, we go ahead and get that replenishment. I probably am going to bring Setra back just a little bit, though. Just a little bit. Not, nothing too crazy, but I'll bring him back just, just a tiny bit. To keep him alive. I don't want him to overcommit and just end up dying or anything. Yashavi on the front lines here are oh, going ham like, like they're just going to be cutting these Orc boys down. They honestly just don't stand a chance. The battle is intense though. There's so many units everywhere. Okay, these archers should be able to pile in now. Um, let's just select all missiles. And I mean, what else do we even focus down with our archers? Maybe their general. But obviously, I'd love to kill their cavalry over here as well. So yeah, let's go ahead and dispatch like these two over onto the left flank. You guys just pile in. Use weight of numbers just to overwhelm their forces, please. Yeah, hit their general. You guys will pile in. You guys pile in. We'll bring back these archers a little bit as well. Also, tell all my missiles. All my missiles are already on guard mode, to be fair. The team guard obviously are holding up their end of the bargain. This general has now made his way in as well. Perfect. We'll just fireball some stuff. Why not? Buff some nice little buffs up. Get a get Cetra in there some more. Cetra is kind of low, but that's okay. Can we... We can't, okay. I was going to say for a second, can we replenish Cetra? Because replenishing Cetra would have been pretty crazy. I just want to see how these guys are doing. They've been stuck in against the York boys for some time, so... And they are supposed to be anti-infantry. With the Ashabi... Uh, the Ashabi... The Sharp T? I think they're called a Sharp T, right? I think that's... How, oh God, this is an ongoing thing. I should just roll with whatever I am doing, I am doing. So we don't have enough Winds of Magic to pop this debuff off again, but we're going to in one more Winds of Magic. So we probably want to keep hold of our Winds of Magic. For a perfect opportunity like this, again, it's just an insane ability. Basically meaning that these guys do no damage whatsoever. It's honestly just crazy. Our archers are all coming in as well now. These guys are yet to make their way over here. I want to be able to hit their archers back there. Also have some more infantry. And I guess why not? Let's just throw up the chariots. Then. They are very glass cannon, but I can use them pretty effectively. Send all these archers down there as well. Our team guard are doing a great job. War Sphinx is doing amazing. Fireball these guys. Their general is still alive. Uh, maybe I should have tried to focus them down a little bit. But I'm letting my infantry go. You can't just do their thing. Get stuck in there. Last realm of souls has now been popped, which is fine. We'll go ahead and pop these. Uh, these Shabdi over there. Anti infantry doing great. And they should be able to pile in. Their general is still alive and kicking. So maybe I will select all my missiles, which are not engaged over here. It's like all of you guys, all of you guys, all of you guys. There's a lot of archers here. And just focus down that general, please. These guys coming in the back is huge. And I think we also, we, our Necrotech has actually already used up all his ammunition. Everyone just focus down their general now. Killing their general should be enough to rout a lot of them. Our chariots, are they up here yet? Yeah, the chariots, I believe, are up here. It's very, very messy, though. But we'll try and pile our, our men through just to chase down these routing units. The infantry try fight is still very heavy over on this left flank. No one is giving in whatsoever. Uh, yeah, we nice have a nice little general up here, though, who is cutting down these old boys. Oh, we're Shabby. Oh, my God. Let's get these guys out of here if we can. I want to keep these guys alive. I don't want to lose them in the battle. So let's try and bring them back, and hopefully they won't die. Because, I mean, obviously, I can just re-recruit them, but I would prefer not to if I can avoid it. Oh, their general is getting absolutely smashed now. Infantry. But none, of, none of my infantry should be on guard mode. All my infantry should be chasing them down. I should just make sure I, oh, I always do that at the beginning of battle. And all missiles, if you can. Just focus down that general unit. You guys obviously can't, though, but just, again, just focus that down. Nice. These guys have got out of there. Cool. Just fall back. I want to keep you guys alive. Look at this clump of missiles here, man. Um, I guess they're over here. War Sphinx guy over here. I think that's a battle pretty much won. I don't really see them coming back from this uh, defeat. We are, we are pushing heavily on their soldiers. They still have some men left, but that's just because we haven't killed that general yet. All of these missiles coming in. A general is really healthy. Don't really know why he's so healthy. Okay, now he's starting to take some damage. Now the boys are on him. Oh, it's just some goblin big boss. We, I mean, yeah, it's just a goblin. Shoot him to pieces, boys. And shoot like the rest of his infantry as well. Because the goblins come back quite often. 
There's so many generals here as well, like so many hero characters. Thankfully, it's not really an issue for us. They're sending over our walls things. So it does seem like we are struggling a little bit on this flank, but sending over the walls or sending over Setra himself, I'm sure will be a great little bonus. We'll send over the War Sphinx as well to help out over here. Yeah, their general is running, fleeing for his life. The rest of the infantry can make his way over. Archers can continue to push up a little bit. Uh, just kill, yeah, kill this goblin big boss. There's a lot of archers here. Setra doesn't have any wins of magic left, unfortunately. Do we have any generals we can fireball here? I don't think so. Oh, we have a general right there. Fireball him. Team Prince, just chase him down if you can catch him. Uh, nice, you're going to rout him. Yeah, I think that's going to be a big, like, kind of mass rout now for the enemy. LV infantry, keep on pushing on them, though. There's actually a big boss back here. Wow. Luckily, we do have some infantry over here. Yeah, nice. So he's routing fully now. They should be routing fully. Yeah, battle has been won, but he's just got kind of a last little stand up here. When it gets to this point of a battle, this is like one of the only points I really don't enjoy Warhammer. Is when it gets to this point, it's just so scrappy of units coming back and fighting. I feel like the enemy should try to be forming up like one battle line, trying to regroup. And it, it just it devolves into such a messy battle, and I really don't like that about Warhammer. I feel like not like not like pretty much none of the other games do that. Because I mean, we're playing on triple speed right now just to try and get through this, because the battle has been won, yet I'm having to be forced to do all of this. It's just kind of a bit annoying. Bring over all the archers as well to help out. I mean, I guess they have got a nice little last stand here. But even still. How's Setra doing? Setra is chilling. He's chilling, which is good. We'll throw him into these back ranks. If we can kill their general as well, that would also be great. The more generals we take down, the better. Archer fire is also going to be huge here. We also have some magic nice. We'll pop up to some whatever magic here. Basically just to give everyone a little bit of regeneration. I'll just continue to help out. Infantry just pile in there. Why not? So apparently we still have some men left. Where's our wall things at? Right here. Again, just pile in. Like, how are they still fighting this? We have some more infantry over on this left flank. Pile in more infantry there. Setra is still fighting. Archer fire should be annihilating them. I don't really know why they're not. There's a lot of archers piled up here. And they're just not seemingly doing a lot of damage. Kind of expect them to, to annihilate whatever's in their path. Like, these guys should be dropping so goddamn quickly, but they're just not. I know my Necrotech is getting kind of low. But I'm going to pull him out a little bit. But if we end up losing this battle, I am going to be pissed. Like, there's no way I should lose this battle. Like, ever. Like, we routed their entire generals and everything. There's no way we can lose this battle. This cavalry is going to be a bitch for if they charge me. And that's exactly what they're doing. Stop them, please, for the love of God. Thank God they're an idiotic and not charging me. Setra, keep on charging them. Get some nice little buffs. Just give these archers, man. How are the archers still left remaining? Bring up this. Our team prince as well can get stuck in here. Nice. These cavalry is running. Perfect. What is this dude doing? Get the hell up here as well. Like, look at all this routing, and yet the balance of power is still so even. I honestly don't really understand too much. What more can I do? Archer fire. Yeah, there we go. Thank God for that. That looked way too close. Like, considering how much we... Like, look how many men we have left, and the battle was still really close. God, that was a 10,000 person battle as well. That's pretty hectic. He also has some more men back here. As long as the Ashabi uh, survives, that's all I care about. Setra's getting 300 kills on his War Sphinx. He is a monster. The Chariot's actually doing really well, um, along with LV Infantry. And the War Sphinx, obviously. Like, this is the saving grace of the Setra campaign right there. Um, what do I want? Do I, I think I probably want replenishment. Because it also gives me replenishment over the next couple of turns. And apparently, we also have to take up the city still as well. Which, I don't see why we have to take out the city still, because we just fought that army, but I guess we have to. Should be a nice, or easy auto resolve, though. Apparently not! That makes absolute sense, because, you know, we just smashed their army. So why should we not be able to then take the city? That is so dumb. I mean, we're going to obviously engage them, because we have to. Um, and we'll let them march out and sally out and attack us. That is so dumb, though. That is really, really dumb. 
Like, I know Setra's army isn't exactly healthy, but we just annihilated their army. Luckily, everyone did level up, though, which is uh, good that everyone did go ahead and gain that level up. We will go ahead and uh, look at what we can give Setra. Probably maybe upgrading this again. You know, reducing the upkeep cost, reducing the winds of magic. This is the spell I probably... Oh, no, I also want to grab these as well, right? So we definitely want to get this at some point. Chariots of the God isn't inactive for a while. Public order in all provinces and unit recruitment and local... Yeah, this is just amazing. We can just spam out like five units at a time, I think. Um, we have a really big recruitment capacity. Then we obviously we have our Necrotech as well. Still hasn't got this, but gets hold of this next turn, which is good. Casual tea replenishment is going to be huge. We'll give him that weapon strength. Then finally our Tomb Prince again continuing down that kind of I'm going to kill everything. The uh, the elixir would also be kind of nice, but I think getting weapon strength is just huge. Going to allow us to, him just to assassinate generals a lot more. And then this general as well has also leveled up. Probably just continue down. Um, what do we want? We don't really have any hero titans or anything, so no point really picking this up. Yeah, you're going to be kind of just more my basic army, so I guess maybe more ammunition for skeleton archers. Or I could make you more of an, an infantry dude as well. And let's do that. We've got this one, which is, I think, the biggest part, making these skeleton archers just a little bit better. Um, and yeah, and I guess we do just... Actually, wait, can we just charge him down? Listen, this army is still fully alive as well. What the hell? Well, we can slaughter these these troops, which will hopefully make the siege a lot easier. Again, take on that. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I meant to take on the, uh, the replenishment. Wait, and now is Cetra going to be ruined now? So dumb. Like, we literally just killed all of this. I'll build some siege equipment. I don't want to fight this siege battle, but I'm hoping they're going to sally out and attack me. They literally have no other forces anywhere else, so... I could also just maybe raise another army. Oh, no, we don't have enough dynasties. We do have our other army, though, which is over here, right? Yeah, we made peace with the Bretonians last turn. We have this army here. This is my chariot, dude. So maybe I need to get some more chariots in this army to really make use of them. And basically, he's just guarding our border away from our enemies to the uh, to the west. We have a lot of money as well, so we definitely can talk about upgrading some of our buildings. Um, with this, we're still a little bit away off from this pyramid, so I think we'll just pick up this pyramid because it's going to be a nice ability. I'm not in a rush to pick anything else up um, immediately. We could obviously upgrade our stable as well and actually get access to some some decent horsemen. The neck hurrah, the neck hurrah, I can't pronounce it. The, uh, the the good horsemen, these guys right here, are actually really decent. It's not going to show me whatever. But again, getting that pyramid in the early game is always great. Giving that nice additional trade, more magic, and public order, and jar generation, I think is going to be good. So the earlier we get that, the better. We also can get some regiments of renowned. I guess we will. I guess what we'll do is we'll merge these two units together, pick up our unit of regiment of renowned. Um, we also have another unit of spare slot of archers as well, which I guess we'll just get. We can always move these into a different army at some point. Still doesn't make the siege any better for us whatsoever. Getting kind of dumb, but... I wonder, can we be in reinforcement range? Where's our border? Our border's, oh, border's all the way here. That's silly, though. That's really... I don't agree with that one bit. Um, so cool, let's end the turn again. Hopefully they're going to sally out, because I don't really want to fight a siege battle, honestly. Oh yeah, we can also see Krokgar as well. How you doing, Krokgar? With your long, long strengthy army, which we're going to have to probably end up fighting at some point in the future, honestly. Defeating Krokgar is probably... Oh no, this isn't even a walled city. Oh, okay, cool. We'll fight this next episode. For a second, because it is their last city, I assumed it was a walled city, but I obviously Karakzun is uh, the walled city, so... Oh nice, we killed their general as well, trying to assassinate our hero Titan. Perfect. Attend! Um, so yeah, let's just fight this. I mean, our army isn't exactly looking very pretty, but... Neither's... There's? Yeah, neither's the garrison. This is for some reason, got men back. Don't know how, because surely we killed it all, but I guess not. But yeah, the rest of our army is looking... No, but this is a walled city. Yeah, obviously we can build siege equipment. Well, I guess we're going to have to try and build quite a bit of siege equipment to protect our archers and stuff, because it's going to be a bit... So, it looks like we're locked up here, because it takes so long to build siege equipment in this game, because it's, it's retarded. Ridiculous, I should say. Um, could build more. Yeah, we're just saving up for the pyramid, right? So yeah, let's just pile through these turns. Uh, oh, one of our generals did actually level up, though. Don't know who it was. Uh, so it's this guy who leveled up, I believe. Yep. Be 
his uh, his mage. Again, yeah, we're just going to work towards getting this. It's so good. Literally, it's an ultimate spell. Could pop some more rights. Maybe a new necro tech as well. So if there's ever a province which we want to level up really quickly, we can get our necro tech. If we see any runes on the map as well, I don't think there are any runes on the map. Yeah, no runes. But if we do destroy it, if there's like a province we come across and it's like level two, we could destroy it and make that necro tech and then it would be a decent level. These uh, guys are happy now as well with another recruitment slot if we want it. We also upgrade that as well. This also gives us... Oh, nice. This gives us more unit capacity and adjacent provinces. I mean, all our, all our empire is happy now, which is good news. But again, we're just going to build up our siege equipment here before attacking because obviously we have a lot of troops uh, we're gonna need we don't have anything to smash down the gates yet really you all right orion you got something to do here mate <laughs> you got you got a job to do here they want me to recruit a lord well if i could i would but we are our capacity if i didn't yeah if i'm not mistaken we are our capacity so. and there's nothing we can do about these guys if we were to go into, like, if we were to go into the sand, we don't replenish at all, do we? Doesn't give us vanguard deployment. I guess we could have raided them as well, but we are sieging them. So let's just jump in behind Tetra. Probably just combine these guys because I think they're going to be awful if they're not combined. These guys I don't really want to combine because I don't want to lose them at all. And I guess we do jump in and fight this battle because it's going to be like, again, it's going to be, what, four more turns till they start taking attrition? Okay, one more turn at least because we need at least three. We need a set of six siege equipment to take the wall, I think. I mean, the thing is, we can just pile through these turns, but I don't want to waste, like, the half the camp, half the episode just piling through these turns. I wish you could just build siege equipment quickly. I just don't see any reason not to in this game. Like, any reason not to. It's just kind of silly. It really is. I'm not a big fan of it. What are you guys up to? For a second, like, I feel like they're going to come take my siege, my city. I'm sieging it. You can't. They're going to help me? If they help me, I Ryan, you'll be my boy. But no, obviously not. Um, so we got, we got, let's just wait one more turn. Why not? Like, eight siege equipment. That would make our units, like, a lot safer going up to the wall. Let's just do it. So I don't know what he's up to, though. The Bowmasters of Orion. If they declare war on me now, I will cry. We've also got this dude coming up here. I think he's trying to uh, hit the elves. Oh, they're raiding. Well, this is going to be my land, so you better be careful. Dead negative growth. That's not too great. Okay, Cetra, let's go. You've got four siege equipment. Um, we could obviously wait to starve him out, but it's just no point. Like, oh, am I going to wait another t eight turns till they surrender? Wait, like, what? Wait, 12 turns for a surrender of a city. It's just so silly. It really is. It's probably my biggest gripe, because not only are siege maps bad, like, this siege map is bad, but it's not only that, it's also that they, like, kind of force you to play the bad maps, almost, like, they, they kind of, in, they make it harder to jump in on the campaign map, because the fact that the, um, the fact that it takes so long to even get siege equipment, so, like, why would you ever want to do it? I'm pretty sure these towers are global as well, right? The range on them are, like, global, so we just have to attack and hope more reinforcements come. You guys simply sit back, though. You're much more of my kind of uh, retreatment forces. We'll use our Necro Tech there. The tomb uh, dude can march up with a Siege Tower as well. And our archers can obviously come up as well and start hammering their, uh, atta uh, their attack king defenses, yeah. That uh, sucks. Let's just move these bad boys up. Probably want to do it as quickly as possible, though. Seems like a good plan. We had to have reinforcements coming on, obviously, all the time. So, you know, once these guys get up here, we want to obviously pile them onto the siege equipment as soon as possible. So let's go and just do that. You guys go there. You guys go there. You guys go there. And we'll actually just throw some ladders up on the walls as well. Obviously, you want to use your numbers as effectively as possible. The archers just get up here and start hitting. But I mean, a lot of their soldiers are weak as well. That's the thing. Just move up and hit their archers, please. Obviously, all their archers as well are going to be a great uh, little bonus to us. Let's push Setra up as, as soon as we can. And I want to go ahead and lower all their melee attack there. I'd also love to smash down that, um, 
I'd love to smash down that gate, but I just don't think we're going to have the, the, the strength to do it until we've taken the walls properly. Are these towers not shooting either? Oh, they are. How... This tower, tower is going to make the walls. No, it's not. You need to be very careful because obviously I don't want to lose any soldiers in this battle. It's looking like all the towers are going to make it, though. A little bit risky. This tower's not, so let's go ahead and, and drop the siege equipment. It, may, it might have actually made it, but I don't want to risk it. And you can honestly just throw up a ladder. Is he stuck in there now? No, good, he's not. Just honestly throw up a ladder and just make your way up. The archers are all up here now. Just start shooting, piling an arrow fire there, probably. Bring up Setra. The rest of the infantry need to get up here as well. Is this all we have? I could have sworn we could have had, probably had more. Uh, let's just bring up the War Sphinx now, whatever. We'll smash down the gate with Setra. Help us pile some soldiers in. The infantry are up here now, perfect. And you should be a bit, like, you must, should be much stronger than their infantry. Just get up there, Team Prince, my dude. These guys are ethereal as well, so they just take no damage. Killing just some arrow boys, it'll be a, it'll be a slaughter. Team King. Team King, get up here as well, along with everyone else. I mean, the nice thing is, the Roman Souls is actually going to heal all of these guys as well, which is great. I should probably have uh, restored as well, way away as well on our on our War on Necro Sphinx. War Sphinx, Necro Sphinx, War Sphinx. Yeah, I was right. Yeah, you just start going ham, um, just cut these guys down. Especially if you cause terror as well, that's always a good bonus. Probably just no point us doing this with these three. Just drop them, honestly. I just run up these ladders. They don't have enough men to cover all the breaches, so. Honestly, just run and just get up here, please. You guys are still in? Yeah, you guys are still getting in, so we do want to drop that and just. Yeah, just, just run up. I'm going to smash through that gate very, very soon. The trolls are going to be a little bit annoying, but I'm sure nothing we can't handle. I guess that's what we archers should be focusing down, is on killing the trolls. Our warriors hammering away. At the York boys. They actually have some York Biggins here as well, which are a little bit, like, pretty good. I'm not going to lie. York Biggins are a, a, a strong enemy. But this gate is going down. There is no way it is standing up for much longer. You can already see Setra as well, smashing it down. The Archer Fire coming in on the trolls. Quite a lot of Archer Fire as well. Wait a second. Wait a second. Don't, don't tell me I'm playing on medium graphics. I'm not, right? Oh my god, I am. I'm so sorry, guys. I was doing a uh, sponsored video testing out the new 1070 I got, and I completely forgot about that. Oh my god, I'm so sorry, guys. We'll stick up to Ultra straight away. I'm sorry that your eyes had to see that. For a second, I was like, this doesn't look as good as it normally looks. I apologize. I really do. I, probably, I guess half of you probably didn't even notice until I mentioned it as well, which is probably the funny thing. I'm really sorry. I'll never, ever do that to your eyes again. Okay, our archers are up here as well, so let's get the archers uh, up here as well. We're, we're obviously focusing down the trolls. Oh, nice. First round of souls has been done. That's good. I'll hopefully be replenishing all of these units back here as well. We obviously have a few more archers as well we can throw up. Team Prince is hammering away. We actually have some infantry up here as well. We'll let them actually get up here first. You guys, however, can use them ladders. The Necrotech, is it? Yeah, it's used this replenishment on the, uh, on the War Sphinx. Because he's going to be the main thing, force of just piling through here. The infantry fight is going on, then it's, it's pretty nice. Yeah, you guys are just giving no mercy whatsoever. I have no rival. More soldiers making their way up. You guys can come over here as well. They're still loaded. You, you, oh, the skeletons, you guys climb so slowly. Just get over here. All of these archers now should be able to just demolish anything in their path. More of an infantry fight there. Has the gate been opened yet? Yeah, the gate has now been opened, but I probably don't want to push forward with Setra. They're going to probably try to push forward on me, though. I also probably want to debuff up here as well. This should hit all their like, kind of good units. I'm hoping it'll hit everyone. Again, that should also replenish some of our units as well. Whoa, what are you doing, Necrotech? Oh my god, you guys are going to have to go in now to save the Necrotech. I, I, I swear I did not send him to do that, but I, I must have, right? 
No, don't die, dude. You're... Yeah, thank God. Thank God he's going to get out of there. No, he's not. He's going to have to go in. Necrotech, run. Run, Necrotech. Don't die. Save him, Cedra. Save him. Probably need to cast a spell as well, whatever. Just, oh, no. He died. No, he didn't. Good. Run, 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 run. Cedra cast a spell as well to give him some HP. Get out of there, Necrotech. The boys will save you. Come on, your HP. Your HP is going up slowly. Good, good, good. They are chasing him down, though. Infantry pile in. Save him. You can't, you can't pass that on yourself, but... Okay, thank God for that. He is going to escape by the skin of his teeth. Poor. I could have sworn I didn't send him into combat either. But I, I must have. Like, there's no way, like, I didn't. You know, he went into combat, but... That's a spearman. Go kill that, please. That'd be great. Dude, just run. Get, like... Oh, also the siege equipment as well. I didn't even look. Pretty dope. Not gonna lie. The siege towers always... Do, all the siege towers for each faction do look really good. It's just a shame you never get to see them because you never do sieges because sieges suck and it takes so long to build siege equipment. Literally, one of my only problems with Warhammer is not that, like, sieges are bad because the sieges are bad, let's be honest. But it's also, like, they don't... They don't do anything to make sieges. Like, they could accept that the siege maps are bad, but try and still make them interesting by giving you more siege equipment or making this... I don't know. Like, they could have these maps and still make siege battles somewhat fun. They, they've just abandoned them. It's like, it's 100%. They've just been like, no, we don't really want to bother with siege battles, which is, I guess, fair enough at this point. Game 2. They're just accepting their, their fate. Uh, guys, go in. You could probably make your way in now. Infantry has done a great job there. Hit our second realm of souls, which give a nice little replenishment buff to everyone. Archer Fire can just come in back here. Cedric is kind of low, though. Probably going to be a bit careful with him. Yeah, Cedric, just get out of here, my dude. No point over committing. The rest of our infantry is pouring. There should be more than enough. We should also have our Tomb Prince as well, wherever he is. Yeah, our Tomb Prince is up here as well. Just focus down that general. Oh, that's a really... Oh, my God. That... Oh, we're going to be able to just reduce melee attack for so long with all of our skills and stuff. Because we, we can use our Tomb Prince's debuff. And then we can also use Cetras as well. So we can pretty much debuff them constantly. And just look at that. Zero melee attack, zero melee defense. It's so strong. That general, though, is so screwed. Uh, which is good. Especially with all my buffs as well. That's a fighting bat. Keep on pushing round. I mean, battle is over. Don't know how this was ever, you know, the, the auto resolve for them, uh, for the Tomb Kings, has always been bad, but, you know, this battle is obviously never not going to go in our favour, right? Thank God we won this. We don't need to chase anyone down because it's a siege battle, so we do just automatically win. And we can finally get some replenishment in our army. And I'm, I'm starting to be a bit more inclined to getting replenishment in the army because a lot of our troops are starting to rack up that XP. And the XP is, like, makes a difference for the Tomb Kings quite a lot because it gives you more morale, it gives you more uh, melee attack and defense. So even just getting one or two chevrons on your units is kind of a big deal for the Tomb Kings, I've found. Oh my god. Hakaros uh, survived by the skin of his teeth. And this should be our first book of Nagash. Claimed. Here we go. The first book found a Codex Mortifica. The pages within seeped in dark magic. The hieroglyphs match those upon the pillar. Illuminating our progress. Our first step has been complete. What does this book give us as well? Let's have a look. So we need to get our second book now, obviously. Collected any of the nine books. Give us some more money. We got 18 grand now. Awesome. Uh, we also essentially getting a nice little leadership buff uh, when sieging. Also getting some bonuses against the Yorks as well. Um, so what does this first book give us? It gives us income from trade, campaign line of sight over all golden idols and marble and gem resources. So that should mean that we can probably trade with a few more people now. 
Because we have obviously just met a bunch of more people, you know. There's the High Queen right here. I'm sure she wants to. No, she doesn't because why would anyone want to have free money? Just doesn't make any sense, does it? Oh, Warhammer diplomacy, man, is something else. Um, probably going to kill them at some point. Dark Elves, you want to trade at all? No. Who likes me out of you guys? Probably no one, right? What? Maybe some of the elves want to trade? No, of course not. Because why would the elves want to trade anything? You know, they're not just like the biggest trading nation in the game. Um, cool. We leveled up some stuff. I think, again, we're just going to go ahead and give this guy... The elixir is also really good. I'm going to pick up the elixir. It's one point. It gives him some fire resistance and also gives him some HP. Uh, more HP can never be underestimated. Look at that replenishment, man. Hit points replenished by turn 1600. That is just awesome. These guys are going to be up to full strength very soon. We obviously secured this province as well. And I'm, I'm, not, in, I'm not disinclined to them get uh get a desert outlook here get a barracks there why not we can now however build this is what we wanted to do take us 10 turns but again it'll be a good little you know monument to have and i always like getting these special monument buildings they're always fun to mess around with i believe there is also one over here as well which we do want to probably pick up at some point and we go to the building browser uh yeah you do have a black tower as well which gives some good income some more public order and provides just an insane garrison so I think once we've uh, once we've got our armies, I think I'm gonna march on the Black Pyramid, maybe, and try and secure that, and then take it for ourselves. Or can we can we take it, or do we only sack it? I'm not sure if that's the case. Because I imagine sacking it gives you a lot of money. I have to be careful with him, obviously. The nice thing is though that he will hold this instead of a dwarf. I'd much rather fight Tomb Kings and fight the dwarfs. Again, I also obviously want to take out the dwarfs down here, but I might just leave them. Because that's going to be a hard fight. And we're going to lose many a, many a soldier trying to take this from the dwarves. I might abandon them and just go over and fight the Dowie over here on the left-hand side. And just leave this province as is. It's not, the, it's not the worst thing in the world, honestly. Um, you guys make your way back over here. Yeah, you've still got a pretty elite army. I, I'm, I'm going to reform this, get some more Tomb Guard. Maybe get rid of a few of these guys. Um, so I only have like two of them. Obviously at the moment we can't get any Tomb Guard because we're at our limit. But hopefully we won't be at our limit forever. And um, we will upgrade more barracks wherever we can. This also leveled up. I just don't know what to build there honestly. Yeah we can probably upgrade. Maybe build a barracks over here or something. Yeah we'll, we'll build some more Tomb Guard. I think that's going to be our, our main goal. Now we've got our first book is obviously make this province happy. Replenish our units and take them back over to uh, you know the other side of our empire. Are you going to come in and fight me, my dude? Oh, baby, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. So your army is pretty good, but I get the garrison. Um, yeah, your army is much better than mine, to be fair. It's actually a lot better than mine. <laughs> but you have a lot of infantry. You have some, like, monstrous units, which are going to be very hard to kill. Very, very hard to kill. But we have a lot of spearmen. We're just going to pile in on top of you. And your infantry should crumble. Cavalry should be taken out. I mean, the artillery should be taken out by this. So, cool. We're going to go ahead and fight this battle next episode. Our first encounter with Arkane the Black. Um, he's actually already got one of his quest items as well, which is something we need to do. Uh, but yeah, we definitely need to finish him off. So, we'll try and look forward to doing that. But make sure to drop a like and a comment if you enjoyed, guys. The first book of Nagash has now been secure, which is great news. And I'll see you guys next time. And fish out.